Welcome back everyone, me again, your one and only Matimus, talking today about mortars. I really appreciate you stopping by today. Just to give you a little heads up, YouTube is doing some really strange things lately. A lot of people have been messaging me saying that they haven't even been getting notifications even with the bell. I'm not sure what's going on, but if you could hit that bell button for me, just like these boys are hitting rounds down range, I'd really, really appreciate it. So yes, we are talking about mortars today, and it's one of those weapon systems that a lot of people ask me, Matimus, do you get a lot of people arguing with you that you're in the artillery and the mortars are not actually an artillery weapons platform, it's an infantry weapons platform? We're not going to discuss that today because that's not really what I want to get into. We're going to talk a little bit more about the importance of mortars in the battle space. And to be honest with you, I have to say that I have a lot of respect for mortar teams Mainly for the fact that they were the ones that we were calling in fire missions from whilst I was in Afghanistan, providing either smoke screens or HE onto enemy targets. So you know, a lot of respect for them, big time. So one of the most dreaded and revered weapons of an infantryman is obviously the mortar. Mortars are lightweight and man portable, most of them, so say the people that are not really carrying the bastards. Uh, you know, the bigger mortars, the 120mm, need to be towed on wheels, etc. But in many militaries around the world, light infantry units have a mortar section. Three mortars normally in every company. In World War II, some German units had a mortar with every platoon. The Russians and the Germans went crazy producing mortars in World War II. And of course, in World War I, everything was down to the artillery. The mortar was really born in World War I. Originally, the mortar was built to lob an explosive in a high angle arc so it would land in narrow enemy trenches. Artillery had too much of a flat trajectory and wasn't really able to land inside the enemy trenches. But mortars, who rounds pretty much went straight up and came straight almost down, did a really good job of this. This is still true today. The angle of the round is a major difference between artillery and mortars. Some mortars are too large to be man portable, like the 120mm which is towed. A mortar round has a very steep arc, while the artillery round has a flatter trajectory. Another difference is that the mortars fire rounds at slower speeds than the artillery, so they must be fired at a higher angle to achieve any range. Since then, it's become a valuable tool for most infantry units. This is because they are fairly small, depending on the type of projectile that you're using, and they are easily able to be reloaded on the battle space. A box of ammunition, say three rounds, can be easily placed in the back of a man pack and carried into the battlefield. Many commanders use mortars as kind of a pocket artillery battery, kind of like a miniature Gerber that can be fired very, very quickly and put away again. Because mortars are light enough to be carried that accompany infantry units through rugged terrain, a vehicle normally could not do so. Of course, one of the main disadvantages is ammunition. It gets heavy and somebody in the infantry has to carry it. One way to get around this was for light infantry units attacking enemies to actually have every member of the company carry one mortar round or two. When the company is getting ready to attack, they drop off their rounds near the mortar crews. Mortars are also favoured weapons of guerrillas and terrorists, unfortunately, because they're very primitive in their design. The mortar does not really have to see the target at all to fire at it, and mortars can fire over hills, buildings and rivers, similar to the artillery. A mortar crew usually consists of at least three members. The gunner controls the deflection and elevation of the mechanism itself, the assistant gunner loads the round at the command of the gunner, and the ammunition man prepares and hands over the ammunition to the assistant gunner. More members may be available to a mortar team to help carry out ammo and provide security. Unfortunately, mortar rounds normally are not as powerful as an artillery round, but mortars are usually more available to the individual squad or platoon leader. This is why it's vital to have mortars in the combat battle space. They are extremely flexible. Unfortunately, unlike self-propelled guns or howitzers, they can have difficulty trying to get ammunition or the weapon system set up very, very quickly. Of course, with you know certain gun crews in the artillery, you can set up extremely fast, but the inherent logistics of trying to get main guns up and into action can be quite difficult, unlike the mortar, which for the most part is fairly quick. It should be noted that most mechanized infantry units do not have organic mortars at company level. In mechanized or motorized battalion, the mortar is a battalion level weapon. This normally has to do with the fact that the heavier direct fire weapons are available and mechanized units usually fight against other mechanized units. Mortars, of course, work very, very well against dismounted infantry and light vehicles, but against tanks and armored personnel carriers, yeah, their use is fairly limited. 
There are numerous types of mortar rounds that are usually available. HE is obviously the most common. Smoke rounds used to conceal friendly movement or mark enemy positions for airstrikes. It should be noted that smoke rounds are best fired on the enemy instead of friendly troops. This way friendly forces are less restricted by the use of smoke and don't come out of the smoke waiting into enemy machine guns. White phosphorus is obviously another favourite. It burns even underwater and the fumes are extremely toxic. It's not something that we like to use in NATO anymore but it is there. There is presently an artillery round that is fired into the sky where a sensor targets armoured vehicles below it. Because the rounds attack weaker armour it can be very effective. It may only be a matter of time before this round is designed for the mortar and of course there is many different technology systems out there that they are trying to bring into place for the mortar to do this. Mortars, especially the traditional muzzle loading variety, really aren't very glamorous compared to a lot of other weapon systems, but they are a vital asset that is always highly valued by the infantry. If you're in a far war Afghanistan, your mortar teams are only the main heavy support that you could rely on without having to call for hire for a fire mission request. They can be man-packed, and it's really not pleasant hauling the parts of ammunition around, but it can be done. They're also extremely effective at producing fear to the enemy. Being able to launch that amount of firepower very quickly, relocate and not even be found, unlike some other counter battery fire missions that can be placed by the enemy, it puts a lot of fear into the enemy as to, okay, what's coming next? Another interesting and key attribute to mortars is that they are a lower energy round than a conventional artillery projectile, so they can fire ammunition that wouldn't survive the stress of being blasted out of a gun or a cannon. That doesn't make the guided ammunition cheaper though, it means that standard HE ammunition can be made of lower grade steel or even cast iron, which costs a lot less than the high strength steel used in conventional shells on artillery pieces and also produces a lot better fragmentation pattern or detonation. This is one of the key contributing factors as to why these rounds and why mortars are so good at engaging dismounted infantry. Normally the heavy artillery pieces are used for armor, buildings, mass amounts of infantry or fixed emplacements. Mortars are the infantry killer for this fact. The ammunition itself and the casing and the projectile of the casing is very very soft which produces a heck of a lot of fragmentation. Very similar to artillery, mortars have a very key role in both attack and defense. In the attack, effective maneuver requires a base of fire and when it comes to the infantry they need it extremely quickly and on hand ready to go. At company level they can employ mortars very very quickly and even at platoon and section levels even faster. Both direct and indirect are required, but normally indirect is going to be needed in force to actually keep the enemy's head down. In an attack, they're there to establish the conditions for a maneuver, so basically give the commander the opportunity to have a bit of time to think about what he needs to do by suppressing the enemy infantry with his own mortar teams. They're obviously going to suppress the enemy and keep his head down in his trench and fix him in place so he can't counter his assault towards you, and to provide close supporting fires for the actual assault itself as the troops move forward. In the defense, this base of fire is used in different forms. They actually force armored vehicles to button up, closing their hatches and reducing their visibility or tactical awareness of the battle space. Mortars are very good at doing this. Of course, a mortar is not going to be able to take out a tank. However, a couple of mortar rounds, 120mm definitely, landing on top of a couple of T-72s, yeah, you're going to want to button up your hatch. They also break up enemy troop concentrations. For the most part, not all mortars are actually going to be able to engage and kill the target, but they will definitely want to get them into, you know, cover, break the formation, and really kind of disorganize the troops that are coming towards your position. They also reduce the enemy's mobility and kind of canalize into his engagement area. So putting them into kill zones, you can actually kind of coerce them like a sheepdog into areas that you want them to be engaged in. Like I said, mortars not always are going to be the ones that are going to actually kill most of the enemy. The artillery is going to be the ones putting the heavy amount of ammunition down, but they can give a bit of harassing fire to kind of coerce the troops to go in a different location and therefore put them into kind of a kill box. They're going to deny the enemy of the advantage of defilade terrain and force him into areas covered by direct fire weapons. They also break up the enemy combined arms team and destroy the synchronization of the battle group altogether. Like I said, kind of breaking up the troops between infantry and mechanized mechanized. If they're getting mortared, they'll close hatch down, not a big deal. Hold in position and kind of advance as they go. Infantry are going to get into a, you know, dug in position, break in some cover and probably leave the mechanized or armored force to continue pushing forward. This allows troops that are engaging those enemy forces to isolate them and potentially, you know, ambush them, cut them off, uh, really really handy to have. And finally, in a defensive role, it really does protect the infantry against a close dismounted assault. Mortars, just like direct fire and indirect fire weapons, have the ability to really put in some firepower. 
The problem with heavy artillery, such as, you say, you know, 155mm round, is putting danger close with 155mm round, you're really, really tight towards your troops in the danger zone that can kill them or really, really injure them. With mortars, that danger close is reduced a little bit sometimes, depending on the size of projectile you're using, and therefore those fire missions can be brought in tighter towards your own friendly troops if it came down to it. Of course, not really something you want to be doing is bringing in fire missions close towards your troops in a danger close situation but with you know smaller projectiles smaller waters that area of danger towards your troops can reduce somewhat Overall, folks, mortars are extremely effective for the battle space, and a lot of people say to me, mortars are redundant, why don't we have all these missiles, and we have, you know, aircraft that can do all this, and, you know, the Apache, and all these helicopters that can see targets from miles away, thermal imaging. There is nothing that will ever replace the mortar as a key attribute to any combat environment, and I am really, really proud to see, um, you know, members of my own unit actually going to do training and training up soldiers who are going to be working with mortars. I have a lot of respect for that. Uh, I wish myself could actually start learning on mortars. I don't think I'm going to have the ability to just with my full-time career, but I would love to try. Um, the guys have told me a lot of stories about mortars, a lot of fun operating them. Uh, so, you know, a really, really good bit of kit. Some of the mortars that are out there, I mean, the Russians go to town when it comes to military hardware. And their mortars that they make are absolutely massive. I mean, they're kicking NATO's butt in terms of mortar projectile size. The 120mm mortar, although extremely effective, is just getting annihilated by some of the Russian equipment out there. It's really, really interesting to see. Anyway, that is it for me today, everyone. I really appreciate you being here today. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I'm not getting a, a good, warm, fuzzy feeling about YouTube actually sharing my videos in the subscription feed. So once again, if you could really hit that bell button, I would really appreciate that. Uh, if you wish to support my channel, please feel free to go check out my Patreon page. It is in the description box below, and anyone who's been supporting or donating towards that site and my channel, I can't thank you enough. Really, really can. It's very much appreciated. Thank you, your Patreon supporters. It really means a lot. Um, if you want to come hang out with me, play some games, or just have a chat. I actually had a discussion with an aspiring junior soldier about to go to Army Foundation College Harrogate uh, today. We had a, literally about a half an hour discussion about his worry and concern about going to uh, you know his basic training in the British Army and we had a really good chat and I think I kind of eased his nerves a little bit so if you want to come hang out and talk about things like that or just message me or play video games whatever it may be hang on my discord channel it is a chat room service if you don't know what it is um, go download it install it whatever it may be and come have a chat with me the link for my server is in that box so come have a chat um, I do also have Facebook so again if you want to be notified of upcoming videos that's not being shown on YouTube you can actually just Pop me on Facebook there and I'll add you as a friend and we'll send some videos out to you. Uh, that's it really, folks. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'd love to hear your opinion on the mortars. So if you've operated them or about to operate on them, have been supported by them or just have some general information that you want to share, let me know in the comment section below. Have a wonderful day, folks. Bye-bye.